Hello, this is Miss Povey and today we're going to be looking at the character of Sheila in an Inspector Calls. So the first thing you'll need to do is to get some paper and a pen. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do this. Okay, so just like last lesson, I've given you eight statements on the screen, only four of them are true. So what I would like you to do is to write the numbers of the statements which are true about Sheila. So the first one is, Sheila is the first to be questioned. Number two, Sheila is the second to be questioned. Number three, Sheila met Eva at the Palace Bar. Number four, Sheila met Eva at Millwoods. Number five, Sheila takes the engagement ring back in Act Three. Number six, Sheila respects her parents in Act Three. Number seven, Sheila promises to change. Number eight, Sheila reassures Eric that he can change. So I'm going to give you one minute to write down four numbers which are true. Okay, let's go through the answers. So the true statements are, number two, Sheila is the second to be questioned. That's because Mr. Burling is the first to be questioned. Number four, Sheila met Eva at Millwood's, which is a dress shop. Remember, she has her fired because she smiles when she tries on a dress. Number seven, Sheila promises to change. Now she does that right in Act 1 when the inspector first questions her. So her quote is, I'll never, never do it again to anybody. And then number eight, Sheila reassures Eric that he can change. So Eric is quite upset in Act 3 and he's worried he'll act that way again, even though he doesn't want to because of alcohol. And Sheila reassures him that he can change and he can become socially responsible as well. So well done if you've got those four. Give yourself a mark out of four, please. We're now going to move on to the next task. Okay, so we've got two short extracts from an inspector calls now to look at. Remember, we're focusing on Sheila. So I've just given you three techniques to try and identify from this extract. So personal pronouns, that is I, you, us, we. A dash, which shows she's being interrupted by her father. And then Priestley showing that the younger generation are more caring than the older generation. I'm going to read through the extract for you now. Sheila. I behaved badly too. I know I did. I'm ashamed of it. But now you're beginning all over again to pretend that nothing much has happened. Nothing much has happened. Haven't I already said there'll be a public scandal? Unless we're lucky. And who here will suffer for that more than I will? But that's not what I'm talking about. I don't care about that. The point is, you don't seem to have learnt anything. Okay, so just looking at Sheila, I'd like you to try and find examples of personal pronouns. Remember, that's the use of I, we, or us, or you. A dash showing that her father interrupts her. 
and then examples of Priestley showing that the younger generation are more caring than the older generation. I'm going to give you three minutes to find those. Off you go. got one minute left so I'll just remind you personal pronouns that's I we or us you need to find a dash which is a little line showing that she's been interrupted by a father I also want you to think about why her dad feels that he is able to interrupt her and then lastly find me at least one example where Priestley shows that the younger generation are more caring Okay, let's go through these now. So personal pronouns. We've got I behave badly too. I know I did, I'm ashamed of it. So by her using I repeatedly, it sounds quite personal and emotional. You can tell she's really feeling upset. But now you're beginning. So then she turns the attention on her father and she seems quite frustrated and upset that he hasn't learned a lesson. You see that again in the last paragraph where it says, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't care about that. The point is you don't. So again, she's showing that contrast between I and you. So she seems very upset and frustrated that her father isn't acting the way she is. Now at the end of her first speech, you can see where she says happened and then there's a dash and her father interrupts her and says nothing's happened. So you could link this to context and talk about how in that era, the father was the head of the household and he feels that his daughter doesn't know as much as he does and she's not as intelligent as him because she's a woman. So therefore he thinks it's fine for him to interrupt her and talk over to her. And actually he interrupts her several times across the play. And again, that's showing that power dynamic as the man being the head of the household. And then finally, Priestley showing the younger generation are more caring. So this is the green now. She uses the word ashamed. Now that's emotive language there. You can tell she's quite upset and she regrets what she did. We then have 
you're beginning all over again to pretend that nothing much has happened. So there she's implying that he's not caring, he's not being socially responsible. Which is again showing the contrast between the old and young generations. And then lastly at the bottom of the page we've got, you don't seem to have learnt anything. So again that's drawing attention to the fact that the older generation don't seem sympathetic at all towards the lower classes. So well done if you've got all three of those. Can you give yourself a mark out of three? If you've missed any, can you write an example? Let me give you one minute to do that. So you're giving yourself a mark out of three and then writing any examples you've missed. Okay, let's go into the next short extract. So this is Sheila again. This is all from Act 3. I'm going anyhow in a minute or two, but don't you see, if all that's come out tonight is true, then it doesn't matter much who it was who made us confess. And it was true, wasn't it? You turned the girl out of one job. I had her turned out of another. Gerald kept her at a time when he was supposed to be too busy to see me. Eric, well, we know what Eric did. And mother hardened her heart and gave her the final push that finished her. That's what's important, and not whether a man is a police inspector or not. Okay, so in this speech, she's explaining to her parents, who still don't understand, that actually it doesn't matter if the inspector was a real policeman or not. They've still acted selfishly, they still all need to change. So she's trying to explain that point to them. Okay, so I've given you four techniques to find this time. So rhetorical question, you need to look for the question mark. Repetition, look for a word which is said more than once. Metaphors, this is where something isn't literal. So it isn't really happening. And then alliteration, you're looking for the same letter at the beginning of words used twice in a row. I'm going to give you three minutes to find these. Off you go.
Okay, let's go through the answers. So our rhetorical question, and it was true, wasn't it? So that's a really key rhetorical question. She's highlighting that actually they have all done these immoral things which they shouldn't have done, and therefore that's what's important. Repetition, we've got turned used twice. So she says, you turned the girl out of one job, as in you fired her, and I had her turned out of another. So she's emphasizing that between them, they've got her fired twice. Then on to metaphors, we've got, if all that's come out tonight, like have we learnt about it all tonight? Gerald kept her. Now that is a metaphor or a euphemism for her um, giving her a house and using her as a mistress. Now you would have to link that to context and talk about how within this era it was very common for upper class men to have lower class mistresses and give them a house to live in. Then we've got the metaphor, mother hardened her heart. So it's implying that by the mother refusing to give her any charity money, it pushed her over the edge and caused her to commit suicide. So the final push means like drove her to suicide. So well done if you've got all of those. Can you give yourself a mark out of four? We're now gonna go on to the last task. So make sure you've written in any that you've missed. Okay, so here is a paragraph I've written. Priestley presents Sheila as a regretful and caring character. So I've focused on the question which is Sheila, and I've also talked about the author's intentions. So that is the point of Sheila, that's why he created her, to show that the younger generation are more caring. Priestley utilises personal pronouns, so that's a technique, like I, in the line, I know I did, I'm ashamed of it, to create a personal tone and show her regret. Priestley, so again, I'm focusing on the author, Priestley uses Sheila, she's the focus of my question, to suggest to the audience that the younger generation are more caring and socially responsible than the older generation. Similarly, the emotive language, I've got another te technique there, ashamed, emphasises how much impact the inspector has had on her and imply that she will be less selfish in the future. So I focus on the question in red at least twice. I've got my techniques in, I've got personal pronouns and emotive language. I've zoomed in, which is in the dark blue. I've talked about my audience, which is in the orange. And I've talked about the author, which is in the green. So I've covered everything there. Now it's your turn. So, and it was true, wasn't it? So I've given you four things to try and do for this quote, the technique. So firstly, can you write down what technique that is? If you're struggling, it has a question mark, so what do you think it is? Okay, so that's a rhetorical question. Now I want you to pick a word to zoom in on. So I'd go for true, so she's emphasising that whoever the inspector was, he's brought out the truth about what each of them did and that's what's important. Now, author's intention, so this is more difficult. Why has the author raised the point that even if the inspectors are fake, he's brought out the truth? Why is the author showing that that's important? Okay, so the author has used this line to show that their actions are more important than who the inspector is, and he's focusing on social responsibility. And finally, the audience reaction. How are the audience supposed to react when Sheila says, it was true what the inspector says? So how are the audience supposed to feel? Are they supposed to agree with Sheila? Are they supposed to disagree? Okay. So the audience are supposed to agree with Sheila that what's important is how each of them acted. 
Right, so well done if you've got all of those. I'd like you to use the remaining time now to try and have a go at your own paragraph using those notes. Thank you for listening. I'll speak to you again soon.